Welcome back, my name is Mark, this is Supersonic Sax, and in today's video, we're going to take a look at how to get your fingers moving faster on the saxophone. To demonstrate this, I took this pattern in F-sharp from Clark's technical studies for the cornet, which is actually quite challenging on the saxophone, due to the coordination of all the side keys that is necessary to play this pattern cleanly. And what I tried to do was see how fast I could get this within three practice sessions, each lasting about 45 minutes to an hour. Now the most common thing you'll hear about playing fast is that you first need to play slow. This is partially true, but I've even heard it described as being categorically false, which we'll see why in a minute. If you're on my email list or you have my method book, the way I recommend increasing your finger speed is to set the metronome to about 40 beats per minute and then gradually increase it in increments of two or so. But I no longer believe this is the best way to approach this topic. You might be thinking, of course, if you can't play something slow, you can't play it fast. And that is correct. But just because you can play something slow does not then mean that you can play it fast. To play fast, we have to practice fast. And the only way to play fast is to get the fingers moving as efficiently and accurately as possible between the keys. Whenever I would try what I'll call the old method, where I would play very slow and then gradually increase the tempo, Invariably, I would eventually hit a wall where I just couldn't go any faster. So I would take the tempo back down and try again. Always ending up with the same result where my fingers just wouldn't coordinate any faster. Why does this happen? Because when you're playing very slowly, it's possible to hit all the notes with lots of extra and unnecessary motion in your fingers. To put this another way, at very slow tempos, you have plenty of time for the fingers that are lagging to catch up and hit the keys when they need to. However, as the tempo increases, the efficiencies become more apparent, as you'll notice here towards the end. So how do we overcome this? When playing slowly, we have to make sure the fingers move as little as possible and remain very close to the keys. Once we understand how our fingers need to move, then to get faster, we have to push the tempo right to the limit of our abilities. This is very valuable practice because it shows us where there are still problem areas in our fingering. Then what we have to do is isolate these areas and iron out the kinks. In this next clip, I first play the exercise with some mistakes, and then I revisit some of the challenging areas a few times, and then try the phrase again. And you'll notice that after just a few repetitions of isolated practice, there is already some improvement from when I first attempted it. Also want to isolate any transitions that are especially challenging, for instance F sharp to G sharp. You might find that when doing this with notes that require the coordination of multiple fingers, that you'll start tripping up to the point where the pattern reverses itself. One way to overcome this is to start the trill slowly to identify how the fingers need to work and then speed it up. In doing so, you may find that your fingers are already better able to coordinate. Now, when you're sitting with a pattern and pushing the tempo, you'll find that certain parts of it require more work. For instance, the beginning of this exercise, moving around F sharp, G sharp, and A sharp is a real finger buster on the saxophone. And this is where you'll want to slow things down to figure out where your fingers are not moving as efficiently as they could. <laughs> Then push the tempo higher, breaking the pattern up into even smaller sections if necessary to keep going over the problem areas. Mm -hmm. 
Then really push the tempo to the point where you're barely holding on and keep trying to play as evenly as you were at the slower tempos. Just as you'll hear in this clip, there's going to be mistakes when you're operating right at the limit of your abilities. But that's okay because we want to keep challenging ourselves to play a little bit faster than we're currently able to. When you put everything together, you're going to be able to play whatever you were working on much faster than when you first started working on it. Now with a critical ear, that still needs some work, especially at the beginning. So what I have to do is slow that part down again, where I'm able to play clean, but still at a point where I'm just a little bit uncomfortable because I'm pushing the limit of my speed. And this highlights an important point about developing fast fingers. You have to spend time sitting with the instrument, doing concentrated work to develop your technique. And although it won't happen overnight, it can develop quite a bit faster than many other areas of saxophone playing. So with a little bit of effort, anybody can develop fluid technique and have faster fingers than they would ever need for any situation. And that's pretty much it. So head to the practice room, start shedding, and before you know it, you'll be flying up and down the fingerboard faster than you ever thought you could. If you enjoyed this video, please drop a thumbs up and subscribe to stay tuned for new content. And feel free to leave some thoughts in the comments or let me know anything you'd like to see on this channel in the future. Until next time, keep doing the breathing calisthenics and don't forget to push your limits in the practice room.